let's take a 16 year old camera out for a spin to do some insect photography. This video has no sponsor, so if you would like to support the channel, then check out some of my products on my website. You can get some texture packs and presets, help to support the channel and keep it going. As you know, I am a Canon shooter. I currently use the Canon EOS R for my photography, and I love the Canon EOS R. The technology that is in this camera is fantastic for any type of photography. However, you don't appreciate the technology that's in this camera until you go back and use a 16 year old camera. This one is the Canon 400D. It's a 10 megapixel camera. It's got nine focusing points. Wow, I mean, that's a lot of focusing points. The ISO range is from 100 to 1600. <sighs> Mind blown on that one. With a whole whopping three frames a second. I'm gonna take this today and I'm gonna do some insect photography just to show you that you don't need the latest, greatest gear to start macro photography. The newer technology just makes it easier to get the shot. So with my 400D, I'm gonna match it up with a 50 millimeter F1.8. This is commonly known as the Nifty 50 or Plastic Fantastic. One of the best lenses I've ever bought this lens is. We're going to be using extension tubes so that we can turn that 50 millimeter lens into a macro lens. We can get upwards of around two times magnification and that's on a full frame equivalent. That's the extension tubes plus the 1.6 crop factor of this APS-C camera. If we use any type of flash photography, we are gonna be using the onboard flash and I'll be using my Crafty Bell's bonnet to diffuse the light. And I also have this little diffuser. We are in the middle of a heat wave. It is very bright out here. So if we get a situation where there's a nice image, I am going to diffuse the light using this. So it just softens that light out and gives us an overall better quality image. So let's take this camera now. Let's go around here. I'm at Romeo Pools again, where the dragonflies are. And let's see what type of image we can get out of this 16 year old camera. Right, so to get this started, we need to sort out the camera because the settings are all over the place. So I am going to be doing a continuous burst shot because we're not using flash, we're using natural light. And it is bright outside and not touch screen. <laughs> so what kind of ancient technology is this? The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to format my card. I always format my cards before I do any type of shoot. I'm on manual, ISO, we're gonna to go to 100. If I remember correctly, I rarely push this camera above 400 because 400 ISO is more like a 6400 ISO on a modern camera. It's very grainy, very noisy. I will push the ISO a little bit more because with modern noise reduction technology, you can get away with it. We are photographing damselflies and dragonflies and technically it's not macro, it's close up photography. Um, you can argue that in the comments if you want to. So I'm going to go with an f-stop of 3.2 and a shutter speed of... You see that there? I went, I went to look at my live view to look at the exposure and this it doesn't have live view. <laughs> I'm, going to be, I'm going to be missing that. So I will adjust the settings obviously on the fly as we're taking the pictures. I'll put the settings up on the pictures that I'll show you. So we've got a little damselfly that keeps landing on this piece of grass here. So I'm going to try and get a shot of it. And I already know I'm going to have difficulty getting this shot. In the previous video, you saw me lean over with my flippy out screen, uh, using live view and just take the picture. Well, one, this camera doesn't have live view. Two, it doesn't have a flippy out screen. It hasn't got anything to be honest with me. It's got an image sensor. For its day, it was a good camera. <laughs> Compared to modern technology, it's a step backwards. Like I said, if you've got an old camera in your collection, I encourage you to take it out one day because you really appreciate the technology you've got in your newer cameras. But I have no flippy out screen. I have no live view, which means I'm going to have to get low down, lie down and try and get this shot. Right, so normally I'd put the live view on. I'd just poke it in like that and take a picture. In fact, I'm going to guess the man. I'm just going to... I'm going to look for the viewfinder and just see if I can... Yeah, I don't know. 
<laughs> ain't gonna work. I'm gonna have to get it up there in old school. Now this camera is an old one, like I said, it's 16 years old. It's that old, some of the plastics have turned into plasticine. I have no eye cup on here either, but um, let's just do the customary turn around the hat, get down dirty and let's see if we can get a shot. And this is where you miss your flip out screen. Bloody hell. My mate is telling me I'm underexposed, but I'm going to take the shot anyway. Okay. God. <sighs> so with the magic of editing, it looks like I got the shot quite easily, but quite frankly, we've been there 10 minutes trying to get that shot. And um, yeah, when I bought my first uh, Canon 650D, that, had, that, that was the first camera that had a flip out screen on. And I never used it. I was like, that's just a gimmick. Now I'm a macro photographer, that flip out screen is a godsend for situations like that. We did get the shot in the end, but it was a lot harder to get it than it would have been if I was using my EOS R. Again, modern technology, modern cameras, they just make it easier to get the shot. Let's have a walk around and see what else we can photograph. Just rescue the bee out of the pool. Plop him on there. So the first problem I've got is having, I think it's 44mm of extension tubes on. In this situation, I can't get my shutter speed too uh, high. Again, with an ESR, we can just bump up the ISO. And I am missing shots by having to keep taking extension tubes on and off. So that's the reason why we have dedicated macro lenses. And again, I'm missing my flip out screen. All right, let's move on then. We'll leave that B2 dry out. So we've got a little fly on this, uh, what looks like it's kind of a dandelion salvisoy type flower. So this is in the shade. I can't get my shutter speed high enough. Again, on the ESR, I'll just bump up the ISO, but you can't do that on this camera because it's too noisy and grainy. So we popped out the onboard flash. We popped on our Crafty Bells diffuser, and I've changed my settings to one tune of a second, F7.1, ISO 200. Let's get some shots of this fly here on this flower. Let's push our luck and see how close we can actually get. Again, with a dedicated macro lens, we don't have to do this. And of course, every time I swap the extension tubes, I'm getting dirt into the camera and getting sensor dust on there. That's why I do like my two times uh, lower lenses because I don't have to swap them out that often. I honestly, I cannot tell if these photos are in focus. They look okay for the viewfinder, but the, uh, the screen on the back of this camera is so low res that I actually can't tell if they're in focus. Even when I zoom right in, it does look a little bit soft, but this is one of them things where you hope for the best, you go home, you put it on the computer and hope that you have got a shot that's in focus. One thing I am finding about this uh, setup is I'm doing a lot of chimping, and that is when you take a picture, you're looking down at your screen to see if you've got a decent shot, which I can't honestly tell with the low resolution screen that I'm using. But with the EOS R, because I'm using an EVF on there, it shows it me in the actual EVF. So I don't have to keep getting up and down, up and down, 
I can carry on shooting until I get the shot. And I have missed a couple of shots because I've taken a shot, I think it's good, I've moved off to look at the screen and whatever I was shooting has flown away. So chimping or less chimping is something that I do like with the SR and uh, I'm, I am missing shots with this camera because of chimping but I'm still getting the odd shot that is nice. The one big thing that is missing from this camera that my EOS R has is focus peaking. Now I use focus peaking exclusively to nail my focus every single time. You just move the camera back and forward until your insect's eyes glow red, which is where the focus peaking is, and you take the shot. With the 400D, I have nine focusing points. I can set one of them so that when I'm in focus, it beeps over that uh, particular focus point. But I am missing the focus peaking, but we are getting on and we are getting some half decent shots. It's just, it's harder. Like I said before, and I've said it several times already in this video, the newer technology just makes it easier to get the shot. Oh look. A baby one. Oh yeah, you're doing better than me. That one. Mm -hmm. That one. Again. Mm -hmm. That one. Mm -hmm. And that one. Good, carry on. And that one. So as we can see, you can do insect photography with a Canon 400D. So if you have one, just get out there and just get shooting. But for me personally, I'd rather have my EOS R. Much more prefer this one. But that's it from this video. That is insect photography with a 16 year old camera. It can be done. If you've still got an old body like this and you want to get into macro photography, it won't hold you back. You can still do it. Just watch some more of my videos and you'll get the idea on how to do it. Extension tubes are the best way to start. And then you go on to a macro lens and then if you need to upgrade the body. I want to thank my Patreon supporters for allowing me to bring you this free content. Again, check the link out in the description for Patreon and also a link to my website if you want to support the channel then you can purchase some of my texture packs or my preset packs. All the images that you've seen in this video have been edited using my Lightroom presets. But that's where I shall leave this video. 16 year old camera, insect photography, you can still do it, it's just very hard. I want to thank you for getting to the end of this video and I will see you on the next one. Did it first time, man. Okay. I will push the ISO a little bit because with modern technology, we're going to go with, well, we're photographing damselflies and dragonflies and stuff like that. So technically it's not man macro. Ah. But what we have got is we've got a little blue damselfly that keeps landing on a little, um, what they're called? Stem, grass stem, whatever. Now we have got a little blue damselfly that keeps landing on this, this... Damn. <laughs> do you want to come do this? I think you should. <laughs> You're in the next video, that's for sure. So, again, because I ain't got live view, I, I mean... What? Phew, there's a piece of grass in the way probably, you want to, might, might want to move over a little bit. So... As I've just shown, you can do macro photography for... Right, start that again. Again, check out Patreon, it's in the link in the... In the almost at it. Personally, I'd rather have my EOS R. Much more prefer this one. Do that again. Oh, babe, I don't press the board. What? <laughs>